Welcome back. I'm Rick Blackwell and for J.D. Hayworth. Last month's Supreme Court decision changed the definition of marriage. Now a group of lawmakers want to go further by wiping out the terms husband and wife. J.D. Hayworth spoke with Sam Rohr, the president of the American Pastors Network. Do you believe the terms husband and wife are being targeted in order to discourage their use socially? Uh, there's no question, J.D. I, I, I think this attempt is very clearly an effort to completely purge, and I'll use that word purge, any reference to traditional marriage as we have known it. I mean, the, the, the effect of the recent Supreme Court ruling has opened a floodgate, a floodgate of not only lawsuits challenging all areas of religious freedom, but it, has, it seems to have emboldened those who wanted the court to rule like it has, but to go further and completely purge and remove any vestige of the concept of one man and one woman. Sam, some would call this act a further indication that America is no longer a moral leader. Do you agree? Well, you know, I think it's an. I think it is a kind of like uh, an ex, uh, uh, an explanation point, perhaps at the end of a sentence. A lot of people thought and wondered, you know, about the Supreme Court ruling of which this really was uh, engendered as a result of that. But many thought, well, you know, the Supreme Court ruling on marriage. Uh, is opening up a new chapter. And I say, no, no, it's not opening up a new chapter. It's putting, it's putting a conclusion on the end of a very long sentence that's been written for over a generation. I mean, the court has been dismantling everything about Judeo-Christian morality for a generation. And this now becomes an egregious action that is not only seen and felt in the United States of America, but it has been received and felt around the world. And I believe that other leaders of the world are interpreting this just exactly as I have said it and have said the United States is now without question. You may have had doubt before, they say, but, you, but it removes all doubt now. The United States, as the moral leader of the world, no longer exists. In fact, it is a leader of moral depravity. And there are leaders who, in fact, are saying that. You're saying that what has happened here could in fact be fatal to America's future. You want to elaborate on that? You know, underpinning the credibility and the leadership of any nation is its moral underpinnings. I mean, let's think about it. Do we respect, uh, you know, the, 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 I, I, the, um, uh, the Islamic terrorist nations of the Middle East? Do we think that they are models for civilization? I hope not, and I don't think so. Uh, do we think that the Stalins of old, uh, the Khrushchevs of old, the Castros of old, were leaders and models to which the world looked and towards those who were downtrodden and, uh, and in bondage across the world looked to for hope? No, not at all. But they did look to us. We were that shining city on the hill. We have been the magnet for those of downtrodden around the world since the, the beginning of time when our founders first prayed there, uh, there with the, when, the, when the pilgrims came and knew that they were on a mission uh, not for gold, but for God. And the pilgrims came and said, uh, you know, the Puritans came and said, uh, Lord, let us be a uh, shining city on a hill. And William Penn said here in, Phil in Pennsylvania, a holy experiment of self-government. It was very, very clear that they were looked and they hoped and they knew that if perhaps we could be a model for self-government, the world would look to it. And in fact, the world did, and we became that leader but I believe in this last generation, J.D., and particularly in this last administration in particular, there's been almost, I'd say, an administration put on steroids with a race to the bottom heading toward the very cliffs falling off of but moral Sam, let, let me ask you this, and I'm just going to play devil's advocate here. There, there are some that would say that what you're talking about is discrimination. What would you say to them in the 20 seconds that we have remaining? Well, discrimination against who? Those who don't believe in... in, in Those uh, in who do believe marriage? in same-sex marriage. What would you say to well, them? Well, I, what I would say to that is that um, they have attacked traditional marriage. No nation in the history of the world, other than the Babylonians of old and the Netherlands of 2001, have ever recognized same-sex marriage. No one, even though they have had uh, homosexuality within their cultures. No, it never has been the norm. And even as Chief Justice Roberts said, not in a millennia of time has any nation ever really recognized it. So no, it's not discrimination. It's recognition of what in fact is best for the family and for a nation. That's it for now. J.D. Hayworth will be back tomorrow night. Have a great night, everyone. And thanks for watching.